The LISA enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay is a plate-based assay technique designed for detecting and quantifying soluble substances, such as antibodies, antigens, proteins, peptides, and hormones. The LISA tests are broken into several types. In this video we will talk about indirect ELISA, and we are going to see how it can be applied for HIV virus detection. When a person is infected with the HIV virus, the immune system creates proteins called antibodies as part of the body's natural response to fight the infection and to neutralize the pathogen. Usually, after an incubation period, the body begins making antibodies that are detectable for months and even years. The indirect ELISA test is used to detect the presence of these antibodies. First, a blood collection procedure is performed by venipuncture. Blood is the preferred specimen for testing because it has a higher concentration of HIV antibodies than oral fluid. After blood collection, the next step in the process of HIV testing is sample preparation. The samples are carefully placed into a centrifuge machine. During centrifugation, the blood components separate based on their density. After the centrifugation process is complete, the serum layer is carefully removed from the tube. The serum is then transferred into a new properly labeled tube for further testing. Finally, the samples are appropriately stored in a designated area until they are ready for analysis. Once the serum samples are prepared, the next step is coating the plate with the antigen of interest. In this step, plates of 96 wells or strips of 8 wells are used. The well strip is placed into a support frame. Then, an antigen solution is added. The HIV virus has a complex structure consisting of various proteins, including GP120, GP41, and P24. To detect HIV antibodies, one or more of these antigens can be selected as the specific antigen. The selected antigen solution is carefully added to each well. Then, the well strip is covered with adhesive plastic and incubated at room temperature or in a laboratory oven. In ELISA, the most commonly used material, as the solid phase, is polystyrene. The antigen is immobilized onto the polystyrene surface. Next, the adhesive plastic is removed. Then the well strip is overturned and tapped to remove the excess antigen solution. Also an absorbent paper towel is used to ensure the thorough removal of the antigen solution. After the excess antigen solution has been removed, the next step is to wash the wells with a wash buffer. The wash buffer is a specially formulated solution used to rinse the wells and remove any unbound substances. By using a wash buffer, we eliminate any unbound antigens. Once the wash buffer has been discarded, an absorbent paper towel is used to remove any remaining liquid. The next step is to block any remaining unoccupied sites on the solid phase. During this step a blocking solution is used, which typically contains proteins such as BSA, serum, non-fat dry milk, or casein. Blocking solution is added to each well, ensuring complete coverage. The well strip is then covered and incubated. The proteins in the blocking solution create a barrier on the plate, preventing the target antibody from binding to these sites in subsequent steps. Once the blocking step is complete, the adhesive plastic is removed. Then the well strip is overturned, allowing the blocking solution to drain out. Next, the absorbent towel effectively absorbs any remaining solution. After removing the excess blocking solution, the wells are thoroughly washed with the wash buffer. This step helps to ensure that any remaining blocking protein is thoroughly removed from the wells. After discarding the wash buffer, any residual liquid is removed using an absorbent paper towel. After the blocking step, the next step is incubation with the samples. The serum samples obtained from patients are added into the wells, ensuring that each well receives the appropriate sample. After the serum samples have been added, it is important to include negative and positive controls to evaluate the test.
The well strip is then covered to create a controlled environment for the incubation process. During the incubation period, the antibodies recognize and bind specifically to the corresponding antigens that have been immobilized on the surface of the wells. Once the specific recognition between the antibody and the antigen has taken place, the next step is to discard the sample solutions from the wells. Next, wash buffer is added to the wells. The wash buffer helps to remove any unbound or nonspecifically bound substances, leaving only the desired antibody antigen complexes. After washing away any unbound substances, the next step is the incubation with a conjugated antibody, also known as a secondary antibody. By using a conjugated antibody, we can detect and quantify the presence of the targeted antibodies. The conjugated antibody solution is added to each well, then the well strip is covered and incubated. The conjugated antibody is specifically designed to bind to the antibody antigen complexes present in the wells. Next, the conjugated antibody solution is removed from each well, ensuring that any remaining liquid is eliminated. After using the conjugated antibody, the next crucial step is to perform a final wash to remove any excess conjugated antibody. The wash buffer helps to wash away any remaining unbound conjugated antibody, leaving behind only the specific antibody antigen complexes. After the final wash, the next critical step is the detection of the antibody antigen complexes. This is achieved by using a substrate that initiates a reaction, resulting in a detectable signal. The substrate solution is carefully added to each well. Then the well strip is covered and incubated. To enable the detection in indirect ELISA, the secondary antibody is typically labeled with an enzyme, such as horseradish peroxidase, HRP. Various detection reagents have been developed for HRP, but one of the most widely used chromogenic substrates is tetramethylbenzidine, TMB. In the presence of hydrogen peroxide, HRP enzyme catalyzes the oxidation of TMB, resulting in the formation of two intermediate oxidation state products. One product is a colorless TMB cation radical, which is in equilibrium with a blue-green colored charge transfer complex, CTC. When antibodies are present, a color change occurs, and the wells exhibit a blue color. Next, prior to photometric detection, the reaction is commonly stopped by lowering the pH of the reaction mixture using a strong acid, such as sulfuric acid. Following a second one electron oxidation event facilitated by HRP, the blue colored TMB product is transformed into a yellow colored diimine oxidation product. The addition of the acid halts the enzymatic reaction and stabilizes the color development for subsequent measurement. The color change from blue to yellow is indicative of a positive result in the ELISA assay. Next, for confirmation and interpretation of the obtained results, the spectrometer instrument is used to read the absorbance in each well and to confirm whether the patient is carrying the HIV virus or not.